and we're live. Well, folks, Mike's here doing another quick update. I believe this is number six. Uh, first thing on the Intex video, I got called out by a bunch of people because I gave the wrong credit for the music. It, Pinball Wizard was written by Peter Townsend and The Who. Elton John did a version in the uh, movie Tommy. Not to make excuses because that was just laziness on my part going from memory instead of uh, actually taking a few minutes to look it up. That's because when I was a, a kid, Pinball Wizard came out. They had the album with the back when we had albums, and of course it had the picture of Elton John on there, and I always associated the two. I didn't stop to think that, yeah, he performed it, but he didn't write it. So Peter Townsend uh, did uh, Pinball Wizard, and uh, I need to uh, atone for that, and I did put a correction in the description. Uh, Dale C. says that uh, about the picture of the mainframe computer, the computer in the still picture is representing a mainframe is actually a PDP-11 mini computer, probably an 11 slash 70. I've seen that photo before. I think the guy standing was Paul Allen, uh, and the photo was used in Microsoft publicity to establish some cred as a coder, whereas Bill Gates had none. But anyway, um... I actually, that was kind of an inside joke. My, my degree is in MIS, Management Information Systems. And yes, folks, back then in 76, that was actually a mini computer. I know we laugh at it today, but hey, man, that was cutting edge stuff back then. I'm glad somebody caught it. Maybe I don't feel any younger, but at least I don't feel so alone. Okay, uh, let's see. Uh, it was noted that by several people that I failed to mention that Intex was the first company to market a Titanic kit back in 1974. Apparently, most folks felt that it was a really nice kit, too. So now I have to go see if I can find one of those. Pan Am made an interesting observation, which, uh, sort of uh, channeling his uh, inner Jedi. Model company makes video games. Model companies, you became the very thing you swore to destroy. <laughs> that was a clever one. Uh, the bit uh, at the end about the bit of irony at the end. Uh, Max, are you trying to uh, channel your inner Emperor Palpatine? Uh, no. That is something I sort of borrowed from an old episode of Wings of the Luftwaffe about the ME410. I'll see if I can find that clip and tack it on. But by then, the thought of German escorts and bombers droning over Allied lands was bitterly ironic. The drone of Allied bombers over German soil was a constant reminder that the Third Reich was finished. Uh, let's see. Uh, I had thrown out a quick question about the Gunstar kits, why no one ever made one, and I actually got a very, very well-informed response. Uh, this is from Starfleet grad, and... Uh, he says, no plastic model of Gunstar was made because The Last Starfighter was the first movie to use CGI for all the ships. I think it was Monogram who approached them on the issue. When they found out that there were no drawings or filming model, just a computer-generated image, they took a powder on the idea, which, given the way they have to cut the molds, that makes sense. Of course, today we just make a 3D graphic and send it to them. probably be easier, but such was the technology of the day. In the IMC video, I had a couple of comments and questions about the lawsuit. Uh, Gabriel A. states that, well, I can say without a doubt that IMC did copy Monograms F-105. I have both kits, and they're the same, minus IMC's additional battle damage parts. And a couple of folks commented that perhaps the Sky Raider was different enough, but apparently not. I'd remind you that this was a jury trial, so they convinced 12 people that they had had their intellectual property copied. Part of it was the kits, and part of it was the instruction sheets, which apparently were almost identical. Also, a couple of folks noted that there were different versions of the Sky Raider, but apparently the differences in the cockpit design were about the only differences, and that just wasn't enough to bridge the gap. Andre points out, I find it quite weird that Monogram sued IMC, but did not sue Ravel, which did the same thing when it copied their 148-scale B-17 Flying Fortress. According to Thomas Graham's book, Monogram Models, Bob Reeder of Monogram just phoned Ravel and told him not to do that again. Yeah, that is an interesting observation. I'm not really sure why. 
I'm guessing that Mattel probably made Besser go after IMC because they were running the show since 68. But these are just all guesses on my part. Italeri. Paolo Colasi, and I hope I didn't butcher that too badly, states, Italeri is the bright side of value for price modeling. Never dare to put out really outdated kits in new boxes like others. And I can confirm their kindness. Back in 1987, my F-15's wing was melted in casting. I wrote a very basic English, almost childish letter to the address on the box, and a new sprue arrived with no questions. Uh, I had a query about who has the oldest mold still in operation. I'm guessing it's probably the old Hawk molds or the racing planes, but I think I'm going to look into that. Also had requests for videos about Shep Payne and Tom Daniels, two very influential people in modeling. I'm um, working on Otaki. I actually recorded Otaki's narration, but I just wasn't satisfied with it, so I need to do more research. And I also want to cover Mania, a small company from Japan that was only around for a few years because somehow I ended up with one of their 2-in-1 B5N Kate kits, which you can make as a B5N1 or a B5N2, and there's two airplanes in there. Those molds later went to Hasegawa. I'm actually in the process of building both models, and I'm surprisingly impressed. I'll, I'll cover that in the video, so that's, that's down the pipe at some point. I'm also looking at doing one on figurines and military miniatures, accessories and characters, and that was kind of inspired by the following song, which actually was something one of you guys requested. We'll see you later. Ciao. Odin was a warrior from the land of the midnight sun. With a Thompson gun for hire, fighting to be done. The deal was made in Denmark on a dark and stormy day. So he set out for Biafra to join the bloody fray. Through 66 and 7, they fought the Congo War with their fingers on their triggers, knee deep in gore. Days and nights they battled the band to to their knees. They killed to earn their living. To help out the Congolese Oh, I'm the Thompson Gunner Thompson 
Thompson Gunner Still wandering through the night Now it's ten years later But it still keeps up the fight In Ireland, in Lebanon In Palestine, in Berkeley 